Well, hello again, guys. Um, little ring knife seems to be uh, well, seems to be popular. I uh, was talking. Uh, I'm Facebook friends with one of uh, the people that watch my YouTube videos. His name is Jeremy, and um, he has always had nice things to say about my work, and I really appreciate that. And he has contacted me and has ordered one of these ring knives. So I'm going to get started on that, and as I like to do, if I know somebody watches my YouTube channel um, and they order a knife, I like to put together a little video series of their build so they can just look at it or maybe show their friends. Um, it'd be kind of neat if, if just putting myself in their shoes if I could see something like that. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've got uh, a piece of um, 01 precision ground inch and a quarter flat stock here. It's eighth inch thick. Uh, Dykem is just about dry, and I'll be putting my pattern on there. Now the handle stuff, uh, Jeremy has chosen uh, green canvas micarta. Good choice. And I showed him a picture um, of a boning knife that I had made in my kitchen collection with an orange G10 handle. Um, let me show you that knife. Okay, so Jeremy and I were talking about different handle materials. And I made my suggestions. Um, and I did mention there was an orange G10. And I showed him a picture of a knife that I made a little while ago. It's part of my kitchen knife series. And this is it. This is a boning knife. And that is a red or an orange G10 handle. Uh, it has blue liners. Um, and I'm just trying different color combinations. I really like this knife. I use this a lot in the kitchen. Um, but anyway... He liked the look of of the orange, but what he wants is a green canvas micarta with this color of liner material, which this is the liner, of course. So I have some of this on order in a 30 thousandths thickness, uh, like G10 liners come. So we'll be going with that, and then, you know, of course, this is the uh, green canvas micarta with this knife that you've seen before it has the blued steel and it has a, a military look to it. I really like green canvas micarta. One of my favorites. So anyway, I'm going to put together a short, uh, maybe two videos uh, of this build for him and I'll show a little bit of each and every step, including I'll, I'll take you over to the mill and I'll show making this large hole. Um, it's nothing fancy but just so you can see how everything was done so now that the dicum is dry, I'm going to go ahead and clamp this. And the very first step on a knife like this is always this hole. Uh, that happens first, and then the rest of the knife is laid out around that hole. Hit it, and then I take my little transfer punch guide, one inch, and then an eighth inch transfer punch down through the hole, and then I strike it. Just like that. Now this hole is located. So now I'm going to cut the stock to length and then I'm going to take this over to the milling machine and make this hole first. Then I'll come back and lay out everything else. Alright, step one is cutting a manageable piece of steel off that long bar and uh, then we'll move that piece over to the mill and get it secured in the vise and uh, we'll be making that large one inch hole. Alright. Alright, so I, did, I deburred the cut and made sure that the edges were clean and I had this, I have this in the milling machine vise just on a couple of parallels and then um, there's my center punch mark so I'm going to be locating that um, when I get ready to drill, but all I do uh, for this, I'm going to be making a total of four knives um, at the same time, but you're really only going to see Jeremy's being made. Told you this is a popular little model, but all I do is I take this parallel and put it against the jaws, and I'm going to butt that piece of 01 up against that, and then I can just rotate through different pieces until I have done four pieces. But that's just a way to get some uh, semi-repeatability. Alright, so I'm going to snug the vise. And then I'm going to tap that down. 
and do it again. Now this is an angle lock vise, but still, I guess it's just habit to give it that tap to make sure everything's done on your parallels. And then I'm going to knock the parallels out of the way because I'll be going through there with drill bits and then ultimately a boring bar, which I'll show you. Um, and I don't want to strike the parallels, and plus it's in there securely now. So I'm going to get those out of the way and get set up uh, with a wiggler so we can locate our center punch. And uh, we'll show you the different steps into making a one inch hole neatly on a small milling machine. All right, so what I did is I located center using a wiggler. Um, I just located my center punch mark and you, I, my eye is good enough for this because well, we're just making a knife guys. Uh, but you can get it pretty darn close with one of these. I have an indicator that will actually get into that center punch mark. It's a coaxial indicator, but, you know, we're not making an engine here or anything like that. All right. First step is down with a quarter inch bit all the way through. go when I get the uh, when I get it to the bigger bits I'll knock these parallels out of there one of the reasons I like to do this on the milling machine rather than the drill press is the variable speed because I'm gonna be stepping up through uh, some pretty you know pretty good change of bits and you need to slow it down when you get to the biggest bits um, so that's why I prefer to use the milling machine for this because it's variable speed and it changes quickly versus belt changes over on that drill press. I had the camera moved over to the better side because my arm would have been in your way. So all I'm doing is I'm just taking about 20 thousandths each pass by advancing this 10 thousandths. It'll take a total of 20 off the uh, the hole and I'm just uh, stepping this through slowly and uh, using a lot of oil. It won't take very long to get through this out to our one inch diameter. That's pretty nicely. There we are. So I'll just keep doing that until this telescoping gauge that's set at one inch just drops down into the hole. And we'll be finished on the mill with this piece. Okay, we're just about at the last pass. Telescoping gauge is just starting to go inside, but it won't top the crest, so I've just increased this a little bit. I'm going to go down, um, and I'm going to go back through the hole a couple of times without increasing anything, just to take care of the spring cut, because this does flex. Okay, yeah, just went in, so I'd say we're at one inch. So this one's going to come out, clean some junk off of it, and I'm just going to go through and do three more of these to get myself up in blanks, and then I'll come back to this knife when we're, uh, we're going a step further on it. And the only burr on this work now is where it passed through. Um, just where the edges of the whole arm, we just take and flat sand that and be done with it. But yeah, that really leaves a nice smooth surface on the inside of the finger hole, which is important. It will be showing. Okay, I deburred this hole and I have my little guide pushed down through both of them. And got the pattern clamped back on here. And now I'm just going to take a scribe. I'm going to make a pretty deep scratch all the way around this perimeter so I can profile this. Just work your way all the way around and then we're going to transfer the holes. And I'm going to move over to my little bench anvil to do that. 
Then we're going to be drilling this and cutting our profile out. Go over these little touchy areas a couple of times just to make sure you get a good deep scribe because as you're profiling this on the grinder, it's going to heat up and it'll make this dicum kind of turn a brown color and disappear. And all you do is flat sand to clean that off, you still see your scribe. So that's it. Um, and before I take all this out, I'm going to go ahead and locate my holes and um, I'll do that with this eighth inch transfer punch over there but when I drill for these remember I'm going uh, a little bit larger and I have those bits set out a little bit you know, it's a few thousandths over the diameter of my pin stock to get epoxy around everything okay that's what I've done um, after I did these with the transfer punch took the pattern off and I deepened all of them with a uh, with a real center punch I'm going to chop about half of that 8th inch transfer punch off because every time I use it on a series of holes I have to put it back on the anvil and I have to straighten it. It's just too long and skinny and um, I'm going. it's good tool steel but it does bend a little bit and I straighten it so I'm going to chop it in two and make two 8th inch transfer punches. Um, I just don't need one that's that long. Okay, I have all the holes drilled now and I just went over to the belt sander I just lightly kissed to get the the big burrs off of this so now I'm going to countersink all of these holes an important step before you heat treat Now for this big hole, for this uh, sharp corner, all I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck a uh, little conical stone that I have. I'm going to chuck that up in there um, and just run that around and just do a light chamfer on those corners and we'll be done with the holes then we can get to profiling. Alright, so the next step on this knife is getting rid of all this extra steel that isn't knife. And I'm going to do that, uh, the, the lion's share is going to happen over on little vertical metal cutting bandsaw I have. Uh, and then we'll profile down over on the grinder. So after we drilled through, before we countersunk, you know, I, I got those burrs out of the way so this would still lay flat over on the drill press. And it kissed the, some of the bluing away, but no big deal because we put good deep scribes so I can still see the scribe all the way around uh, that'll guide me as I cut out and then profile and then um, I'll come back on this when I'm over on the surface plate and getting ready to strike guidelines and grind our bevels um, I'm gonna get what I've got shot so far edited and uploaded onto YouTube and between my grinding this and actually finishing the knife, there's going to be a few days delay because I'm waiting for the liner material to arrive. Um, I ordered it about an hour and a half ago, and I just received a text from Pops that it is shipped. So, uh, looking to get that here in just a, a couple of days. So, it looks like I'm going to be making several of these knives. And, um, as I said, I've got an order for this makes number four so far and I've already sold two of these since I introduced the little model so I'm happy about that but what I decided to do is uh, just you, you, if you're gonna be making a bunch of something um, 
it pays to, to make a little jig or a fixture to help things go faster. So that's what this is. This little piece of a pattern is just an overlay that I'm going to put. Um, well, I'll use the pattern here to show you, but all this does is help me set my, my bevel guide, which is that clamp deal that I put on the, on the knives. So I just set that on there, clamp it, set my guide to that, remove that, and then I'm set. And then I can repeat that time after time after time. Um, and it just speeds the process up. And that way you get repeatability and consistent results. So that's why I do it for the handles. Um, but yeah, I've got lots of little patterns and jigs for just about all my knife models over there in my little uh, pattern file that I keep. So I will come back uh, when we're over on the surface plate after, after we get this thing profiled down. And uh, we'll be finishing this knife up. So thanks a lot, guys, and I will see you in part two. Have a great day.